This is Joyce Tice. I'm at the History Center on Main Street with Annie Harris Clark. It's April of 2016. Uh, the Tioga County Fair is getting ready to celebrate its 50th anniversary, and Annie's been involved with that for many years, so she's going to tell us, first of all, how it got started. Okay, and thank you, Joyce, <clears throat> for inviting me. Um, I have enjoyed the fair, of course, or I wouldn't be doing it. But in 1964, uh, the other fairs in the county had pretty much dissolved. And in 1964, a group of farmers, businessmen, and, and the Cooperative Extension uh, decided they would like to go ahead and have another Tioga County Fair. There had been a Tioga County Fair in the past. So they <clears throat> got together and they formed the North Central Ag Authority to purchase the property and they were going to build and maintain the buildings and grounds. This is out in Whitneyville, is that? Yes, this was at Whitneyville, but first they looked at three other places, or two other places besides the fairgrounds, one over in the valley and one on a place near Wellsboro, but there wasn't the acreage and there wasn't the uh, possibility of growth. So anyway, which Whitneyville is the is the center of the county and uh, some of the things that that were a drawback there <clears throat> was when they started to build the, the buildings <coughs> when they started to build the buildings they realized that it was a rock ledge so they had to blast wow. to build almost all of the all wow. of the buildings so anyway that anyway it got started and that's the way we did it but they <clears throat> they borrowed the money uh, you know, and it was all started by farmers, and they borrowed the money, and just, they they bought the land, and, and they only bought, well, I'll just have to look here and see what it was, but they bought around 20 acres, or a little bit more, and it has grown. We've bought a property that neighbored from Byron Benedict, and we brought, bought property across the road that we've used for parking. So it has grown to approximately 90 acres. Wow. So, <clears throat> although it doesn't, you know, it doesn't look it when you're at the fairgrounds, but, but because they had to blast, it took longer and, of course, more money right. to, get, to get started. So the first buildings that were built was the... Uh, of course, the commissioners, they were, they were supportive, and mm -hmm. we had an initial $500 from the commissioners. And the bank in Mansfield, uh, Dick Howe believed in us, I guess. I, I wasn't involved in those early years, but he believed in us and loaned us the money okay. to, to start, to buy the property. And uh, that, that first amount of land was... Um, well, I'll, I'll look through my notes and I'll let you know what okay, it was. Okay, that's fine. All right. But we had, we had to accept, we had the, the first building that was built was the, was the dairy barn and the show ring. And then they built a little, um, food shack. Okay. And they just used two by fours and, and, uh, plywood and had, had the, we, they had to sell food. I mean, right. the fair. people have to eat. That people have to eat, right. But the, the uh, so a few of the wives of the men who started the fair ran the food, <clears throat> the food shack during the fair, and, but they had to have a bathroom. <laughs> so they drilled a well, <clears throat> and they put in a bathroom, and there were no showers. And the first year or two or more, they just had our exhibits in tents. Oh. And one of the, one of the years, I mean, they you know, they had baked goods and mm -hmm. some sewing and things. And <clears throat> I couldn't lay my hands on the early fair book, the fair premium book. Okay. But it was, they, the proposed budget for the whole fair was $4,000. Oh, wow. So... <laughs> That's a far cry from what... Oh my gosh, yes. That's such from, a small you know, from, amount of money now. From what it was, but um, the bid was accepted for the dairy barn, 70 feet by 225, with one end of the barn enclosed, 
for $26,000. Wow. With a down payment of 1900. And they they trusted us and I think we we earned their trust over the years. We've paid for everything that we Well, obviously if you've kept it going 50 years, that's a success. Well, <laughs> I I think it is. I think it is a success. <laughs> and I I think maybe people enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know, there weren't there weren't we had a we put out a premium book so that people knew what there was to be entered, and we do have copies. It was just a uh, eight and a half by eleven sheets. The oh, first, okay. The first premium book was, and we managed through putting out the word. We managed to get one of those, so we do have one of the original. Oh, good premium books, and then we have one for every year. Excellent. You know that has come on up, <clears throat> and. Uh, the, we actually, we had to, we started having events on the track later on, and then we purchased a, a right of way into the track, and so, uh, and the property across the road, and the property up uh, behind where Byron Benedict's garage was, mm -hmm. is, is uh, parking. Okay. It is pretty much parking in the parking across the road, but uh, there have been times when every bit of that land has been used. Well, how, how do you know uh, what kind of attendance you might get in a typical year? Um, I think that, now, because I'm not on the board anymore, mm -hmm. I'm not exactly certain, but I think in the neighborhood of twenty five to 30,000 people. A lot of people. And that come, you know, and now we actually have a paid gate, have had for quite a few years now. It yeah, it's hard to, to count people if you don't have a paid gate. Yeah, and it's hard to count anyway because of the exhibitors who don't have to pay. Right. And, and so it's... An know, estimate, the best you can do. It's an estimate. I right. Mean, I know that <clears throat> they know how many free passes are given out, and um, because I'm not in that part of it, you know, I'm not in the office, I'm right. not... Well, you've been very heavily involved, personally, for many years. Uh, what was your role? Well, it, I actually was asked to be the secretary. Uh-huh. From the first time that I was in the, that I was on the fair board, I was asked to be the secretary. And so, since 1975, I was the secretary. Okay. And, and, and of course they were happy. I was the first woman on the board and they were happy to, because these men were all farmers, all involved with farming. And although we lived on the farm, on a farm, I didn't grow up on a farm, but because of my father's involvement in the fair and with 4-H and we were fair oriented, let's put it sure. that way. Country oriented. Country, yeah, country oriented. So. The, uh, in 1974, we signed a lease with Votech, Tioga County Votech School. Okay. And they had their classes there. Vocational technology. Vocational technology. Mm -hmm. And that was when, and they actually built <coughs> what we called it then, we called it the Youth Center Building. And now we just call it the main building because it's used for uh, wedding receptions and a lot of other okay. and, and a lot of agriculture involvement, but not near as much as it used to be. Okay, you know because well everybody knows you go down the road and see all the barns that are oh. falling down, which and so few dairy herds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the but each each organization then took on the responsibility of building their own building for an exhibit. Okay. For their exhibits, like the sheep and wool growers. And at that time, Phil and I had sheep, and there was 1% deducted from our sheep and wool checks that paid for this barn. Okay. And because we had been housed in a tent before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when that was paid, why? Well, it was paid. Sure. And then the beef... Uh, the beef uh, organizations built their barn, and and other uh, the other barns they have been 
certainly supported by their own, own organization. Now, what kind of organizations uh, are there? Well, at that time, there would have been Tioga County Cooperative Extension, okay. which was very heavily involved, and we probably couldn't have done it without their support. Okay. But all of the other ag organizations as well, the Holstein Club, uh, the Tioga County Holstein Club, like I said, the sheep and wool growers, right. the beef growers, and now we have um, grown to include the rabbit, the rabbits and the goats, and um, you have llamas. Well, there have been llamas exhibited, okay. but not an organization. <laughs> but it's been, no llama club. <laughs> no, I don't. Well, now I I don't dare say no because there might be. <laughs> well, we just have a few minutes left, so. How has the fair changed over the time that you've been involved with it? Well, it's certainly become more commercial. We have a, we have a lot of commercial exhibitors now. Well, we always had some commercial exhibitors, but certainly a lot more commercial exhibitors now. Mm -hmm. But uh, and you know they, of course, help pay the bills. And another another uh, part of it is our tractor pulls. I mean, we started tractor pulls. I announced the early tractor pulls, and it's a lot of fun. Sure. It's, it's just a lot of fun. And those kinds of people, and, and then the demolition derbies, they certainly help pay the bills. Yeah, and it draws people in. Well, yes, and they, they pay their admittance to the fair, and they pay their admittance to the uh, demolition derby. And, it you know, I, I just can't thank the people of Tioga County enough for supporting us. Now what about 4-H? 4-H uh, is an organization of long standing. Do they participate in the fair? Yes they do. They, they, uh, we have uh, what we call the 4-H building and they bring their exhibits uh, that, that would be uh, food and clothing and then they, you know, they're involved in all of the animal areas, all the animal shows and we have, we have a good rapport with the Cooperative Extension, and they have been supportive, and, you know, and they, they use the building. Uh, some, some of them, mm -hmm. their 4-H clubs, use the building year-round. Now, I haven't been involved in a fair, so um, do they have things like uh, pie contests or canned goods or produce yes. uh, prizes? Yes, yeah. we, have, we have all those things. The, you know, all of the homemaking skills, sewing, uh, quilts, you know, every, everything that you just mentioned. We have a large baked good, and we have a baked good auction where we uh, sell these things. We display a, part, a portion of the baked goods with their ribbon and, mm -hmm. and then have a baked goods auction, you know. There's just, I, I mean, if, if you want to keep me here all afternoon, I could tell you some more. <laughs> but you could. And, and I would love to, but I want to be able to upload it to you, to YouTube. Now, what special events are you um, planning for your 50th? Well, they are going to have, uh, it's going to be this spring. The, they're going to have a, like a reception on I don't have the 20th, calendar. I think it's the 20th. The 20th, okay. The 20th of April, April is, is going to be the reception on a Sunday afternoon. Oh, maybe I'm wrong on the date then. Well, we're going to have to... Yeah, we'll have to look it up. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to look it up. I, I, it is something I just didn't even think Well, of. I'll put it up there with this. Okay. Well, thank you very much for coming in and telling us about the fair. You're certainly one of the greatest authorities on it, having been involved in it so long. But I have too much stuff. <laughs> well, maybe we'll do a longer interview where we can include more of it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.